welcome to Women's Wealth, the podcast with me, Joanne. My mission is to educate, inspire, and empower you all to step into your own life of wealth. That feeling of being so rich in your mind, body, and soul. I'm so happy to have you here. Let's get straight into it. Welcome back to another episode 52, episode 52, I believe, um, of Women's Wealth, the podcast with me, Joanne. I'm so, so happy to help you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Thank you for those who listen every week and new listeners. I hope you enjoy and you can resonate what I'm talking, resonate with what I'm talking about today. And yeah, maybe you're watching this on YouTube. So hello, YouTube family. So what I want to talk about today, and I know I've shared a lot about, you know, I'm very open about my uh, past issues with anxiety and, you know, they, you don't just wake up one morning and your anxiety has gone. It could be that something triggers it. And I know in my last podcast, I shared um, about, you know, the car, the car situation. I spoke about it on one of my Wealth Wednesdays as well which to other people might not seem like anything. But when you suffer or have suffered with general anxiety disorder or any kind of anxiety disorder, no matter how much you've grown or how much you think you've come through it. So in my case, I don't wake up with anxiety every day anymore. However, if there's something that triggers me, then... I could have a few days like I did last week where I'm anxious. Now, I'm not talking about a trigger in a sense of, I feel like that word is thrown a lot, thrown out a lot these days. And I mean, not in a, I mean, it triggers me as it pushes me back to anxiety. Now we see the word trigger, you know, at the beginning of programs or other podcasts or YouTube trigger warning personally I don't think we need or should have trigger warnings hear me out so when I'm talking about my trigger it could be anything it could be something really small and what that does is in my body evokes past memories of anxiety and then my it's my brain it's our brain's job to keep us safe so then my brain goes into overtime right okay this is going to happen we must give her these thoughts and feelings to remind her of what could happen here but then I overcome it again and we see so many of these trigger warnings on things that are we going to lose the ability to actually deal with the situation when it arises so yes some people have been through awful things And yes, if they hear someone mention something, it might bring back a feeling. But then the more they work through that, the easier that's going to be. So that's just my thoughts on triggers. I know because I used the word trigger. What triggered me was the financial situation when I was having to, you know, if you watch my Wealth Wednesday, now I feel like it's a little bit comical, although I'm still living in the hangover of it, but just having text messages come through and a huge lump of money had been taken by the car company and then I had the car, blah, 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 blah. I'm not, I won't go into it all now. But what that triggered in me was my old feelings of when I was in debt. And if you've ever been in debt or if you are in debt, the companies that you're in debt to are not always very supportive. I don't know if it's changed now, but when I had my debt on credit cards and a car, because my my situation changed. It was genuine debt, if if that's such a thing, if that makes sense, that my circumstances changed so suddenly that I went from sharing everything 50-50, living with my best friend and having a well-paid job to a low paid job and then having to move in on my own and everything was me 100% but with 50% less of the pay and I struggled and I had to do a relief order but I was made to feel like a criminal 
I was made to feel like I was, it was shame. It was guilt. And I have carried that shame and guilt with me when it comes to money for years and years and years. So when money is taken away from me, that I think, oh, I've got some savings. I feel safe. I've got this savings blanket. And then it's suddenly taken away. I I have those feelings of shame and guilt of, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Um, I wasn't in any debt, but it was just because it was taken. There's actually been another situation this week. Um, but I've obviously manifested that. Everything's fine. I'm not going to go into that. But it kind of links into the podcast today, actually. I will share it because it does link in. So what I do and what I know a lot of you will do is also when it comes in these situations, it's catastrophize. Now, I think I spoke about this briefly on my Wealth Wednesday, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the way that my brain worked then was, so two weeks ago, the money was taken out of my bank, I had these fines that I didn't realise that I was parked in the wrong place on the road, no button is there, um, and the money's taken, and straight away, I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to eat, I'm not going to be able to feed myself, I'm not going to be able to pay the mortgage, I'm not going to be able to do X, Y, and Z, and da 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 now, I first of all put all of those thoughts onto me because last time I felt like I had lost a lot of money or didn't have any money, I was on my own. Now I have a partner. So straight away, when I'm saying all of these things out loud, he was just like, Why are you so upset? You've got me here. And I didn't have that before. And I've never really had growing up um, a person that I would go to to ask for financial help because again growing up in a household with a single mother I was very aware of lack and I wouldn't ask my mum for things a lot of the time because I didn't want to put my put anxiety on her having to think that she had to give me money so that's how my financial brain works which is what I'm working through however what I do then is I catastrophize. And this is what a lot of people with anxiety do. Or you may not have the anxiety running through you, but this is what your thing is. You catastrophize. You think the worst. And we all do it to some extent. However, there's people that do it and it affects mentally, physically, emotionally. And there's people that do it and they just get on with their life. So my partner, he just gets on with his life. He'll have a mini moment of, of catastrophizing. And I'm like, even I, I tell him, I'm like, what? That's never going to happen. So I tell him, but then I do it myself. So there's so much in the world as well that if we allow ourselves, we can literally catastrophize anything. But it will, we're drip fed this through the media. We're drip fed so many things in the media that no wonder a lot of us catastrophize. How many times have we been told there's going to be World War III? How many times have we been told about climate change? Now, I'm just going to use this one as my big example because when I was growing up, we were told about acid rain. I remember making posters and learning about acid rain. And even now, when it's raining, I look up at the, at the sky and I'm very... <laughs> I don't want it to go in my eyes or my mouth because acid rain. But no one talks about acid rain anymore. We then went from acid rain, in my memory, to the hole in the ozone layer. Again, no one really talks about that anymore. Now it's climate change. So yes, they're all in the same family, I guess. But that was... They were drip-fed to me as a child. So even now, when I go outside and it's raining... I'm like, oh my God, acid rain. Don't open your mouth, don't look. It's going to burn your eyelids, burn your eyeballs off. That mini catastrophizing. However, that type I'm able to work with. I'm able to stop my brain running off because I don't have a memory of being damaged by acid rain, if that makes sense. So what happens is we can catastrophize if we don't have a memory that sews the catastrophe together, we can catastrophize, let it go. When we do have a memory or we've had an experience or someone else's experience, this is when we put the catastrophizing on our back and we wear it as a backpack. 
Now, for some people, that could even be, I know I've just mentioned World War Three, but for older people, and I know there's not many people left who've lived through all the wars, and no, I don't think that's possible for World War One. For World War Two, that could be a real-life catastrophe, but for people who've never really lived, not lived through a world war or any war, I'm so lucky I haven't, that I take that and I'm like, maybe, maybe not. Um... And there's so many other things in the media now, just the demise of civilization is literally what people are talking about. And when I watch some things, I do have to stop myself catastrophizing over what is the world coming to, what is the state of the world that we're in now? Because I know that that is out of my control and I'm not going to allow myself to catastrophize on that. So they're big, broad things that were kind of fed in the media that if we allowed them, we could spend all day worrying and talking about the state of affairs of the world and what what it's coming to and how scary it is. But we take a step back from that. Now, catastrophizing on a small scale is where it comes and it can affect us on a day-to-day basis. So for me... Last week, I had another catastrophizing situation at the weekend. It was raining. It was stormy. I went out to see a client. couldn't get there because there was a huge flood. And on the way back home, I missed my turning. I got to, you know, I turned, eventually did a U-turn. And then I spotted a red light. And I was like, oh, have I just run a red light? So instead of just being like, oh, I don't know, I spent 24 to 48 hours checking my phones, panicking, oh, just writing my whole next month off of having my car impounded, black points. But I wasn't even sure. I can't even tell you if I'd gone through on the amber because to be honest, I was watching this lorry and it stopped and I was like, oh, I can go. And it was a genuine mistake. I do pay attention on the roads. But the whole weekend was then spent catastrophizing, which then started to lead me into old patterns where I was then starting to step in, back into my health anxiety. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm really worried. Having, you know, I had to stop myself because I thought, right, this is ridiculous. But now I know that I'm doing it. And this is why I want you to do this podcast today, because once you're aware you have that self-awareness of I am catastrophizing, I am doing this, I am feeding my own anxiety gremlins in my head by doing this, so now I'm worried about other things, I need to pull it back. Just interrupting this episode to remind you to please like, subscribe, drop five stars if you enjoy listening to my podcast, it really does mean the world to me. And also to remind you, you can now watch every episode on my YouTube channel. Head to YouTube, type in Joanne Wealth, and I'll see you there. So I'd love to know, if you do catastrophize, reach out to me. Because it's something that people don't talk about either. Like, I found out, I just thought that it was a word to begin with. When people would say to me, stop catastrophizing, like, okay. I won't, I, you know, I just think, oh, I'm making it up, it was going to be a catastrophe, you know, I didn't actually realise it was a thing, I just thought it was a label that, you know, they obviously did, or they heard of it. Now, another way that this might manifest in your life is, and it did with me a lot when I was teaching, if you have that email, then your boss wants to see you, mm. oh my God, straight away. How many of you are like, what have I done? Now, when I got that email, when I was teaching, my first thoughts were like, oh, God, have I sworn? Have I said something inappropriate? Have I taught something I shouldn't? Like, I would rack my brains and think, right, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? And I relived the past few days in my head, making sure that I hadn't, you know, made a remark that could be taken in the wrong way. Had I explained something? Had there been anything in my PowerPoints? And a lot of the time, when you go to the office, it, it wasn't anything. So I would, was trying to really pull out catastrophizing, making situations out of things that didn't even exist. 
How many of you have done that? I know, I know that you have. So what do we do? Now, the first thing, like I've said, is to catch yourself doing it. We might do this on behalf of other people. So if you're listening to this and you're a mother, you might do this when your kids are sick and you're going to the doctors or your parents are sick and they're going to the doctors or you're sick and we jumping to conclusions. We catch ourselves. We say, right, I'm catastrophizing. Stop it. And I, this is how I talk to myself. I literally start to tell myself to stop it. This is catastrophizing. This is something I am feeding and I may not, it may not even happen. And I go through a series of questions and they are, is it true? What's the worst that can happen if it is true? So I acknowledge, first of all, is it even true? Have I made this up? So my situation at the weekend, I don't know. I actually don't know if I ran a red light or not because the rain was so bad. I was in a U-turn. I, I don't know. So I can't answer that. However, I still spent 48 hours panicking over it. What's the worst that can happen? In that situation, I'd already Googled, the, you know, what happens? You get a fine, your car gets impounded. But So, okay, if I did, that is the worst that can happen. That's it. So I had to sort of come to terms with, okay, if I did, and if, you know, it was on the camera, this is what will happen. That's the worst that can happen. Nothing else is going to happen. So having to bring myself back down and sort of calm my nervous system by reprogramming my thoughts there. And these questions work because you're then training your brain to solve this imaginary problem it's giving you. So I know I've just mentioned it. So our brain's job is to keep us safe. So it puts us into fight or flight. So when it has a memory, so in my case, I've never run a red light. I've never actually got a ticket. So that anxiety, I think, came more from the fines the previous week because I've never gotten in trouble for driving. It was like, I'm a, I'm a careful driver. Um, but I also think that also came from fear of authority, a fear of getting in trouble by the police because I've not ever really had that either. And I do have fear of police and authority especially the country that I live in that we you know I'm a guest here I'm an, an, an expat so it's not my home country so if I do do something wrong it could be that I'm asked to leave and a lot of expats live with that anxiety and if you're listening to this and you live in another country you know that you're you're welcome but if you do something, then you're, you can overstay your welcome. And I don't want that to be the case. So again, this, but that was me catastrophizing as well. I'm going to get deported, you know. Again, completely made up situation. It could be in my head. It's been four days now. I haven't heard anything, so I'm guessing it was. So next is following the negative thoughts to see where they lead. And just allowing them to grow and normally I would say don't water the negative thoughts you know they're the weeds in the garden we don't want to pay them any attention but when it comes to a catastrophe or catastrophizing just see how far they go because at some point it becomes so silly that then you're on the other side of it anyway and you're like oh my god so with me I am not going to get deported because I accidentally went through a, a, turn, a turning light. It wasn't a full red light. I wasn't having my feet put down on the gas pedal. I just turned a corner because everyone else had stopped and then realised that maybe I shouldn't have. And I know I keep going back to this example, but this, is, this was my thoughts at the weekend. And thinking of other, you know, when I was younger, one of my uh, thoughts was always that I used to have a cat when I lived in the UK. And I had this really random thought that if I felt I was going to fall down the stairs and die, and she was going to eat my face. And that was a real fear that so much so even now when I walk downstairs, I go one step at a time, like a toddler. Um, that was in my height of my anxiety 
But I remember even back then, making myself get to the point of how silly that could be. How silly it was. I know I Googled it once as well to say, but this has never happened. And obviously, there on Google, woman dies in flat, cat eats her, eats her face. Of course, there's a story. This is why we don't Google things. The next is, the next thing I do is I remind myself, and I know I've said this before in other podcasts, we are not our thoughts. We control our thoughts. So when we're having these catastrophizing thoughts and putting a situation, you know, putting ourselves in a situation in our heads that we're doing that, we're controlling that. So when I'm panicking and expecting the worst to happen, that is me doing that. It's not my thoughts. It's not the truth. It's not a gospel. It's not the universe. It's me. It's my own brain, my own thoughts saying to me, Joanne, you're going to worry about this and it's probably not going to happen, but you're going to spend the next 48 hours worrying about it. And I have to remind, you know, excuse me, I run the show here. I control my thoughts. And then planting seeds of positive thoughts. And then sometimes in the case where you're catastrophizing, it's, you know, it might not be that you're thinking bad things, you know, it couldn't, not negative things like, oh, I hate this, I hate that. It's a what if, what if this happens? Oh my God, what if that happens? What if I did do that? What if they say this? It's making up these imaginary situations. It's then getting control back over your thoughts and pulling it back and like, I'm choosing not to think about that right now. I've actually just made up that whole thing in my head. Why would I listen to that? We wouldn't listen to our friends telling us a made-up story. We would just, you know, probably laugh at it and go, are you kidding? So if our friends were like, oh, my God, this happened at the weekend, but it didn't really happen, but I'm going to tell you this story anyway, we're just like, okay. And if they'd already told us that it was completely made up but went into this whole drama, we wouldn't go, oh, my God, I can't believe that happened. We, would, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't get emotionally attached because we know it's made up. But what we do is, when it's our thoughts, we get emotionally attached to those thoughts, even though it could be made up. Unless it's already happened and it's tangible and it's there and you can see it, it's a completely made up situation in your head. And then what is probably going to happen is that you'll reflect in a couple of weeks' time when you've stopped catastrophizing because time has passed and you're like, oh my God, I'm worried. I spent so much energy worrying about that and there was no need for me to. And we've then worried about something that's not even going to happen. How exhausting does that get when we keep doing it over and over and over again? So at the weekend, what I did then, so I came home and I was like, I need to, I need to meditate. And obviously I do meditate. I meditate most days, six out of seven days. Most, yeah, seven out of seven. Seven out of seven. So we had an amazing rain day actually at the weekend. It was beautiful. And I took myself upstairs, I meditated for about 40 minutes, I think. I used a ground a, a guided meditation just on YouTube. And I felt amazing after. And just at the end of the meditation, just like magic, there was a huge rumble of thunder, I had full body goosebumps. And even then I was like, right, okay, this is the state that I need to be in. So I'd allowed myself to ground. And it might be that you're somewhere and you're catastrophizing. You can't ground. You can't lie on the floor and meditate and listen to the rain. You might be at work. So take yourself away. Breathe. And what I did in the car when I was like, beep, 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 because I just thought I didn't know what I'd just done. And I was the side of the traffic lights and I was just taking deep breaths. And I was like, right, okay, let it go. And this is something I never used to do. I would be panic breathing and then what happens my body thinks I'm in fight or flight which makes itself go dizzy then <laughs> my body thinks I'm in fight or flight my cortisol levels shoot up my hormone balance is then going to be off because my body's like whoa you know my insulin everything because I'm living in this constant state of not breathing properly so just breathe bringing back control of your thoughts bringing back control of the situation I am in control of this situation I'm just letting it go and another thing that I have recently started to do as well is pay more attention when things go well 
celebrate myself more. And I literally now say to the universe, more please, more of that please. When I'm journaling, I will journal, more please, more of the same. Because we don't, again, we spend so much time worrying about bad things. Of course, we pay more attention to bad things because they're the things that we can't control. They're the things that upset us. They're the things that people want to talk about. Just watch the news. How many good news programs? How many good news? Not as in the program. Good stories. Should I change that too? How many good stories are there when you watch the news? Now, I don't. I know I've mentioned this so many times, but when I wake up in the morning, my partner has the TV on because I'm upstairs meditating. I come down, I get about five to ten minutes of the news while I'm watching, watching my porridge. While I'm making porridge and eating my porridge. And then we kind of we swap places then. I change the channel. There's never anything positive. There's, it's going back to world wars. It's climate change. It's hate speech. It's one world government that they were talking about the other day on something. And, um, COVID still, vaccines was this morning. It's never good news. It's never, oh my God, this, I can't even think of anything amazing that could happen today <laughs> on the news. It's been so long since I've actually seen a positive news story. It's Ramadan. People are fasting. That's a positive. They're, they're tuning in. They're looking at their own lives and fasting and giving up food during the daytime in reflection of what they have and others do. And that's, that's you know, I didn't understand Ramadan until I moved to a Muslim country. But that is why they do it. And there's so much money as well that goes to charity during Ramadan. So they haven't reported on that on the news. They don't talk about that in non-Muslim countries just so that other countries see why this is happening. That would be good news. Like, oh my gosh. And I know there's so many bad things going on in the world, but we still need to hear those good things. So in our own lives, paying attention to the good, and it might be that you just sit down and have a look around the house, oh my God, I'm in my own house. I can afford the mortgage for this. I can afford the rent for this. I have food in the cupboards, water in the, water in the tap. I can have a bath. I can have a shower. I have... And just, so this is what I do. I just look around the house. I have fresh coffee. I feel like a coffee. I can have a coffee. How amazing is that? I can go make my own coffee with fresh milk. You know, and just really paying attention to all that. I have clients. I have paying clients. In your cases, it might be the same. You've got a job. You've got a roof over your head. All of these things we can be so grateful for. They're good things that happen. Now, we also... On the other side of that, we have to teach ourselves to accept that bad things do happen. And they do. And again, for me, for someone who has suffered with anxiety, and I dwell on the bad things and I let the bad things grow. Just letting go of those thoughts and letting go of the bad things and just seeing the, the other side of when bad things happen. So one of the worst things for me was when my dad got diagnosed with cancer, it's non-curable, but he's still here and none of us. I have the odd day where I'm like, oh, you know, sometimes when my phone rings, I'm like, oh, if it's my dad, I'm like, oh my God, you know, but I'm like, right, no, stop, he's here now. Well, not literally, he's in Australia right now, living the time of his life, amazing, that's what I want him to do. So yes, that was a bad thing and other bad things are going to happen, but I can't prepare for them. We're not supposed to spend our life preparing for those bad things. Like how, it's like how we're being, we're born and then we're like, oh, I'm going to die. Imagine if, now that's one thing that yes, we might worry about, but that's one thing that as humans, we kind of push that to one side and we, we carry on. Now, we all know it's going to happen, and it's a bit morbid to talk about, and we don't want to think about people that around us dying, but bad things do happen. People get divorced, people split up, people get sick, and it's just right, okay, I know that these things can happen, but right now, it's not, and when it comes, I know I'll be able to deal with it. And then that situation as well, 
we need to search for solutions rather than growing our problems so when there is something we're catastrophizing over or we have that anxiety what is the solution is there a solution can we sit down right now and sort this out if it's a completely made up situation in your head and you can't then there you go you've already answered your own question can't do anything about it because it's not actually happening yet then we go through that thought process again of letting that thought go because it's not actually happening if it is a situation that's happening okay what can I do what solutions can I put into place so in this I feel like it's stepping into the masculine energy finding solutions and we can step into our feminine energy with it is when we go with the flow maybe we don't find a solution we wait for the solutions to come to us not like we're like oh um, help not in that way but trusting your intuition and if your intuition is saying just wait just leave it do exactly that stop worrying so using our energies either side of those to help we also and this will be my last one focus on what we can control so just going back to my driving scenario this week I've been very I even said to the universe actually I was like okay thank you universe I'm guessing you're showing me here that to pay a little bit more attention on the road. So I can control that. And I've made sure that I'm paying attention on the road. The roads out here are a little bit crazy and it's easy to get lost physically and metaphorically in the whole way that they drive out here. There's not one indicator. I am that Karen that's shouting, where's your indicator? What help if you put your indicator on? There's no indication. There's no lane discipline. There's no People don't know how to use a roundabout. They literally go in the shortest lane and then just cut across everyone to get where they need to go. So what I've done since my catastrophizing, I'm making sure that now I am following every rule of the road because that's what I want to do. Because I want to be safe and I want to keep others safe. So thank you, universe, for reminding me to pay a bit more attention because I obviously wasn't when that happened. Or did I do it? I don't know. I was just catastrophizing. So I can control that situation. And from now on, it won't happen again because I'm going to have physically, metaphorically, literally my eyes on the road. So I will end that there today. And I do hope that if you've listened and you are, oh my God, that is me, this helps. Because again, this is another one of those things that people don't sort of put their hands up and go, I catastrophize way too much. We kind of keep it quiet. And we don't really want to water those thoughts. So if you do have any questions, please, please, please let me know. And I will be back next week. I already have an amazing guest lined up. I have quite a few guest podcasts already recorded. I'm so excited to start sharing these. And yeah, let me know if this resonates with you. And I will see you all next week. 